Dynamite, Episode 4. Let's go, baby! Let's go, baby! I'm sure that's what a lot of the hardcore fans were saying as this show kicked off with Private Party versus the Lucha Brothers in one of these semi-final tag team tournament matches. Now look, I'm usually not the biggest fan of glorified spot fest. And, and make no mistake about it, that's exactly what the hell this match was. But I could tolerate that more if A, it was the only show on the match that felt like this. So you could at least make the argument that you were kicking the show off with a very hot, compelling start. Something different, something unique. But of course, it's not like that. It, it just isn't. And then, you just look at it. It's the fourth week in a row, and they're starting yet again with another match, which is a theme of the night. And I'm sorry. You have to have more than just matches if you want to appeal to a larger audience. And let me emphasize this as well. As the viewership numbers decline slowly but surely each and every single week, it is a fool's errand, a fool's errand, to sit there and only want to appeal to the hardest of hardcore fans. You are limiting your growth, and if you're not growing, you are dying. And that is a fact of life and business. It's that simple. You've got to have stuff to mix it up. And then look here at Private Party and Lucha Brothers. The Lucha Brothers, the team that beat the Young Bucks in the what? The AAA tag title ladder match at All In? or All Out, whatever the hell it was. And then you got Private Party, who last week on TV had a big kind of breakout moment. They beat the Young Bucks. Like This is, should be a big deal for one or both of these teams, and specifically should be one of those things if you're looking to establish Private Party as a legit force, as a legit team, then you need to follow up to that. I know some people probably love the fact that they don't have to think at all, and you just dive right into the matches, and you just get pops off of freaking flops and kicks, but you need more. If you would have done even a little video recap package beforehand showing what, how Private Party had beaten the Young Bucks last week, or if you had done an interview with the Private Party before the match, or the Lucha Brothers before the match, even if you don't understand half of what the fucking Lucha Brothers were saying, even better! They're different! I don't know what the hell they're saying! Instead, it's just straight to the ring and booking it like we're hardcore mark nerds. It's bad enough you're getting a lot of this in other places in wrestling. Like I want AEW to be an alternative. Not the same that you're seeing everywhere else for the most part with one very big notable exception. And it's just the same stubborn crap. These guys don't get it. This is part of the concern that I have for AEW and some of the guys in positions of power within AEW, they don't know how to put together a two-hour national television wrestling program. They don't. Even if you say, well, Cody for years had been a part of one, just because he'd been a part of one, as the business was continuing to decline, does not mean that that makes him qualified himself to write one and produce one and book one effectively. Certainly doesn't with Omega, what the hell would he know? Certainly doesn't with the Bucks, what the hell would they know? Omega and the Bucks, in their own isolated pool amongst the hardcore wrestling fan base in ROH and New Japan and all these other places, they work. They can draw money within the confines of that. But your perspective must change. And when I hear the Young Bucks talking about, uh, we just would be happy and satisfied if we get one million viewers, well, eventually TNT will not be. Furthermore, if you are content and satisfied with, again, only appealing to the hardest of hardcore fans, you're never going to get anywhere. If you did just a little bit of something, and this is a common theme again to me throughout the entire night, if you did a little bit of something to try and establish the characters, which they're still largely not doing, if it's not involving one of the elite members or Jericho or somebody, they're largely not establishing the characters. They just aren't. They're not really telling a whole lot of stories and definitely not telling a whole lot of compelling, interesting stories. You know, those are the things that matter. Those are the things that make the biggest difference. And those are the things that can make the great things that you do athletically in the ring mean a whole lot more. But even in that case, you just look at wrestling in general, and it's indicative of some of the problems to me with the business as a whole today. 
He got the one spot where you get the freaking arm breaker. And instead of that being a savage booking move, because that's fucking sick looking, and building off of that for several damn minutes, here we are. It's just a setup to another move to get to the damn finish. It's just like, that could have been something that you built a match off of for five, seven, ten minutes. And instead, you just finished. That said, exciting opening match. You've seen much worse opening segments in professional wrestling in recent years, that's for sure. Leading to a video package, Wardlow is coming. Weird name, but you know what? It wasn't a match, so by God, I'll take it. But you would think after the opening match that you would want to level set here. You'd want to pace out the show a little bit, and they didn't do that. They went right back into the next match, a tag match for the second semifinal match. You had SCU versus Dark Order. Interesting that they actually gave us a video package for Dark Order, the team that nobody seems to really like. But I digress. At least they kind of tried, but not really. Um, you could tell there wasn't a lot of passion or emotion behind trying to get that group over um, in the video package. It's just, this match to me, I tuned out. Because A, you kind of sort of followed up with the commentary team with what happened with Christopher Daniels last week. But the Lucha Brothers were there, and there was no attempt at revenge or anything like that for what they did. There was really nothing after that. It was just kind of weird. It was just kind of weird. And you largely forget what happened in this match other than the fact that SCU got in a few spots and they won. And... You're going into this, and it's yet another similar feeling type of match. And then instead of breaking up the show with some type of backstage interview, some type of promo, some type of video package, some type of skit, something, to break up the monotony of the matches, we go right into Kenny Omega versus Bad Boy Joey Janela. I'm not even going to use this as an opportunity to crap on Janela. It's just, you go right back into this, why are these two guys wrestling, and why should I care? And if you are going to be one of the dumb dicks that tells me, well, you should check out Being the Elite, or you should check out the YouTube, or you should check out social media, or you should check out AEW Dark. No, that's not how this fucking works. If AEW wants people to tune in, and they want people to care and continue to tune in, it is their job, their responsibility, to educate the audience why the hell they should care and why the hell this match is happening. They didn't do that, really. You just dive right into another damn match. So pretty much the whole first hour of this show was just one big massive aggravation for me. Because it's just pretty much match, match, match. And it's exactly what the hell you would expect hardcore Mark nerds to book the wrestling show as. And of course, it's not going to resonate with larger fan bases. It's just dumb, dumb, dumb. But then, we get to the beginning of Hour 2. And here's Chris Jericho earlier on in the night. Had come out during the one match, and he just went with the inner circle, and they went up into the skybox, or went up into the suite, whatever the hell you want to call it. They had tickets. He was trying to put the tickets over and everything else. Then we get here to the one-hour main event segment, the crossover segment, and here's Cody Rhodes. And you didn't even have a lot of talking, like, Cody would try to talk, and Jericho hits the air horn, so that way we can't hear what Cody has to say, which to me makes Jericho inherently incredibly likable, but I digress. But man, imagine if the show had started with this. This was fantastic. Now, the cynic in me could say, well, of course it was, because they gave a crap because it involved Cody, but at the same point in time, Cody is also facing off against the world champion November 9th at full gear at the pay-per-view. So you best damn sure be doing the things to make it seem like he's a big deal, so that way that match is a big deal. And I feel like, by and large, they are at least, if nothing else, doing that. And I'm here for it. Personal feelings aside. But this shit here, with Cody getting ready to go up and then... All of a sudden, Jericho taunting him and saying, you know, it's four on one. And then out comes MJF. And out comes this guy. And out comes fucking DDP. And now all of a sudden, the odds are even. And they go up and they go after him. And the crazy spot with 
MJF giving um, my ex-girlfriend's scarf to Cody and Cody punching the glass and hitting at Jericho and them going at it. That shit was good. And it really stood out on this show that was so match-heavy, and maybe that was by design. If it was, it's a dumb dick design. But it really, really stood out. Like, once this happened, it changed my mood for the entire night. It really, truly changed my mood for the entire night. Because at least I'm like, this is something of what professional wrestling should be like. You can have variety, you can have spice, you have different things, but you need different things. You have to have different things. The stubborn insistence by so many hardcore nerd fans that you only need matches and you only want matches is exactly the type of shit that could put AEW out of business in a year or two, you stupid morons. This right here, as part of your product, as part of your presentation, can do amazing and wonderful things. If I showed that to somebody and said, this is what professional wrestling can still be, instead of Private Party versus Lucha Brothers flipping around all over the goddamn place, somebody would be like, hey, that dude just sat there and hit through the fucking window. Oh, there's Chris Jericho. Or there's Dusty Sun. And they might give a crap. Fantastic segment. Nothing for me to complain about. And my hope is, is that this leads to some big, massive six-man, eight-man tag match, Involving Dustin and involving MJF and in Cody and DDP. You know, do it next week. Give us two weeks. Build up to it. Build up to something. This was fantastic, though. Then you followed it up with the Young Bucks versus the Best Friends, which was kind of weird to me that the Young Bucks were going to sit there and join and help their friend Cody. But nonetheless, I digress. Um, 